What's up guys? Recently, credit card and personal finance YouTuber Daniel Braun issued a challenge to his fellow creators in his recent video titled, My Ultimate Credit Card Setup with Cards I Don't Have. He created and optimized a five card setup with four personal cards or consumer credit cards and one business card. But here's the catch. They're all cards that he does not have. He then challenged others to do the same. If you haven't seen his video, definitely check it out, but after you watch this one. I like a good challenge, and I think I can come up with a big league setup, even though I have at least like 35 credit cards. I'm not sure. Maybe it's time to count them again. I'm also gonna up the ante. Not only will this setup be cards that I don't have, I'm gonna make sure I don't include any cards I've had in the past. I've canceled quite a few good ones, and this should make things just a little tougher. I'm not gonna lie though, I think my fictional setup will beat anyone's. Tell me what you think in the comments, and I think for this one, we can just get right into it. For my setup, I wanted a couple different things. I wanted continuity. I wanted things to flow well, especially for someone with a player two. I wanted this setup to have some convenience as far as keeping track with the balances and the payments, and I wanted it to be versatile. With this setup, you can travel domestic economy, international business class, road trip, or hey, you can cash out when times get rough. I'm gonna start with the premium card that I do not have and I've never had. It's a card I'm actually considering getting next year, but we shall see. My first card in the setup will be the Chase Sapphire Reserve. I'm not gonna do a full review on any of these cards because that would, of course, take a very long time, but I'll go over the reasons why it's in the setup. Obviously, with Chase, you want to earn ultimate rewards points, but you also need a card that gives you access to the transfer partners, such as Hyatt, Aeroplan, and Southwest. There are only three of those cards, and I have the other two. The $550 Chase Sapphire Reserve will not only give me access to those much sought after partners, but it also has a 60,000 UR point bonus. That's what I'll use to start stockpiling points. To help with the annual fee, the card has a $300 easy to use travel credit, lounge access, and a full priority pass that includes airport restaurants. To go with some of the best travel and purchase protections in the game, the card will earn five times on travel in the Ultimate Rewards Travel Portal, as well as three times on general travel and dining, because I think all Chase cards have to get three times on dining or something like that. One last thing, with the CSR, all my ultimate rewards points will be worth 1.5 cents in the ultimate rewards travel portal when booking with points. That's a 50% boost, which in my opinion, makes for a great way to spend your UR points if you do travel domestic economy often. Guys, if you wanna learn more about the Chase Sapphire Reserve or any of the cards in the video, check out my new organized card link in the description below. Using my link really helps out with the channel and it allows me to do mostly unsponsored content because that's what you guys prefer. So with my big dog out of the way, we need some complimentary cards around it to build out a more well-rounded setup. So next up, I need a catch-all card. For this, I'm going to pick the Chase Freedom Unlimited. I don't have the Freedom, but I have the Ink Unlimited, which is basically its business card twin. The Freedom Unlimited is Pretty boring, but it does have a $150 bonus attached to it at the moment. I feel like that is normally a $200 bonus, but hey, it's in the form of ultimate reward points, so there's plenty of value to be had there. The card has no annual fee, and it earns 1.5 Chase UR points on that everything else category. It bumps things up with it three times on dining and drugstores. Not much else to say here, but it's an okay catch-all card. It's also offering 0% intro APR for 15 months. Now, normally I would not recommend carrying a balance on any personal credit cards, but I do understand that life happens, and if that's the case, 0% APR could come in handy. Now, I hope this doesn't get boring because we're sticking with the most popular issuer for now. We're going to shore up this Chase trifecta with the Freedom Flex. The Freedom Flex is also known as the rotating category card. To go with its $150 bonus, it earns five times on rotating categories each quarter with a $1,500 cap. Now, these categories are generally things you will purchase in your everyday spending, like gas, groceries, Amazon. They are pretty easy to max out. You'll also be shocked to know that it earns three times on dining and drugstores. 
just one times on everything else. Seriously guys, what is up with Chase and this three times dining? Along with its unlimited sister, this card also comes with a 0% intro APR for 15 months. Again, be careful with that. Personally, I have never used any of those 0% offers on personal cards. So I think at this point, I'm in good shape with this setup. I already have the high-end Chase Trifecta, and with that, I can pretty much do no wrong in the credit card game, right? So for my fourth and final personal card, I'm gonna choose a card that I personally think is one of the most overrated credit cards in the game. The World of Hyatt card from, you guessed it, Chase Bank. Wait, wait, no, no I'm not. Gotcha. I wouldn't put a card on here that I thought wasn't the best suited for this setup. See, with the World of Hyatt card, everyone puts all their stock into that free night. But that free night is only good for category one through four hotels, and guess what? You can book those for like 12,000 points transferred over from Chase. Plus the bonus and the earnings are terrible. Guys, I'm not going to recommend a card like that to you. You guys know that I really love hotel cards, so for this setup, I'm going to go with the IHG One Rewards Premier Card. Has a $99 annual fee and a free anniversary night, but here's the catch. With IHG, you get a 40,000 point room, but you can use IHG points to top that off, making it much more valuable for folks that don't wanna stay at the Shady Sadie's version of an airport Hyatt. You guys can stay at an intercontinental overseas, and guess what? There are more than twice as many IHG properties worldwide as Hyatt. Plus, you can always use your UR points to stay at Hyatt, so this gives us a little more optionality. The IHG card also earns. After getting the 140,000 point bonus and a $100 statement credit, you can earn 26 times at IHG properties, five times on travel, dining, and gas stations, three times on everything else. Oh, and add this you get your fourth night free on awards days. Plus, you get platinum status. I think getting this card really does give me great access to two different hotel programs without a lot of cost. Now, here's the curveball. I have or have had so many different business cards, so I had to kind of look for this one. I feel like with this setup, I have the trifecta to stack truckloads of Chase UR points. I have a hotel card for status, bonus nights, in a very versatile program, with budget and aspirational properties. So what's left? Airline? You guys should know by now that I don't give my loyalty to any airlines. And I don't think airline cards are super valuable. So I had to really think hard on this one and I came up with a card that I really think no matter how you spend or what type of rewards you prefer, you can make this one work. For my final and my business card, I'm going with the American Express Amazon Prime card. What's really to say about this pick other than most of us shop at the evil empire and there is nothing wrong with adding some cold hard cash back to this already travel heavy but versatile setup five percent back at the world's largest online retailer i'll take that and that's my five card setup of cards that i do not have and have never had guys tell me what you think in the comments because i don't know if we could do any better than this five card setup what does that tell you about how i pick my own cards Probably best not to dwell on that. Just a reminder, if you want to learn more about these cards, check out my organized card link in the description below. And I wanna send a special thanks to Daniel Braun for throwing down the gauntlet with this challenge. This was a very fun video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And that's all I have today. So if you've stayed all the way to the end, I thank you and I appreciate every single one of you.